All right. Uh, so yes, you have a good question of, so if I understand the problem is you're seeing as a, um, as the community contributor success team, people that are wanting to get a license so that they can contribute some EE features, they visit here and aren't sure which path to go because it's not clear to them. I, I just needed a license for developing. Yeah, so they, there's actually a different process for that. This is specifically for um, oh, so this is just for the education open program, mm -hmm. open source program, non-profit program. There might be some other programs. But yeah, essentially it boils down to to this maybe not being as clear and obvious. So it'll be people making mistakes and choosing the wrong option. Yeah, so what I would, in the case, what I thought was interesting is in the case that you were describing about the... Um, contributor the GitLab contributor needing a license it's interesting that their GitLab fork which is they're thinking this is my GitLab project lives on gitlab.com but so they I, I agree I think if they if this was how they got their licenses then we would yeah right. would definitely I would understand that because they would need one of these right but it would seem like they probably thought they wanted one of these but they don't use this process so it's it's not okay them. It's, got it it's yeah, you know yeah. like um I don't know Dave Smith who happens to be the the IT manager at the University of Manchester mm -hmm. um and you know the there are um, education so they get an education license um and yeah they're, they're they're picking the wrong option right yeah yeah um yeah i gotta say i do like then if you're not concerned about that confusion um i like the simplicity of those buttons um please enter the url to your gitlab repository think if they like yeah, because uh, uh, say I don't. I feel like this has already got enough hints, you know, on premise or in the cloud. You're hosting it, or yeah. GitLab.com, GitLab are hosting it, I, and we're even calling it SaaS and set. Like, there's so many hints and pointers and whatever. I'm not sure any amount of additional prompting and hints and tips is gonna, you know, if they're they're, they're struggling at that point. But yeah. I mean, if we can categorically, you know, if somebody takes and be, says that oh well th this is my project and and pastes that in and then it, it knows that that's on gitlab.com or if they do um i guess it'd be like gitlab dot oh, manchester dot edu or whatever then it would be like well that's clearly not gitlab.com so it takes you down this route um yeah I, the only thing like it's it's kind of assuming that the the customer has the url so at this point I think in time, which i think would. in most cases they would but it's like i think there's possibly well, a case the where reason i think they always would is because in order to apply for the program let me just confirm that i'm not making this up um for let's try education you basically have to fill out a form and the form explicitly asks you so you have to pick something an existing um... okay Yes. So you have to, oh, no, actually, this is slightly different. Okay, I take it back. If I had have done the GitLab for open source, then you explicitly have to um, upload like a screenshot of your repository. You have to include a link to your repository. Here you go, project name, public. So you have to actually put the URL in. Um, and some other bits and pieces, like a screenshot of the project. So you definitely, for the open source program, you already need to you need to have the instance set up and the project set up. But it sounds like education um, mm. is not the case. That makes sense. Um, yeah. 
I think that makes so, sense. So, yeah. So, so the open so, source program that's already associated with the project. Yeah. That's a good point. Does um, it associate it with a group? It's always with the project? Oh, sorry. It's a group. It's a group. I'm basically <laughs> asking, um, and the way I interpret it, a few people that I've spoken to, quite often there's one main project, right? Um, and, you know, yeah, that might be a good example. If we were applying for our own, I guess we probably couldn't because as a company, you know, we're, we're profit, um, profit making. Um, yeah. So, but um, yeah, that's quite often the way it works. You've got a namespace, you, you license the namespace, the group, you know that, um, but generally you have kind of your, your main project in yeah. there. Yeah. I mean, we could still potentially have <clears throat> into your URL um, and then it's sort of like, I don't have, it, it isn't set up yet mm -hmm. or something like that. And then if after that, I guess we could then sort of say like, do you intend to set up your own or are you going to yeah. use GitLab.com? You know, I, it could yeah. be yeah. dumbed down a bit more, I think. Um, uh, yeah, I think it's, I think it'd be neat as like a, um, to provide assistance. So it's like before, before these buttons, you have your little box. Yeah. And once I type it in, it'll flick one of the boxes on and off. So it's like if I've if I've entered something, it the other thing is now disabled. I'm like you have to click SAS because that's where it's from. And then if I just clear it out, I can just click the one that I know I need and I don't have to worry about it. So I, I think having the input box is some sort of like assistance thing. Yeah. So so, so cool. maybe. Maybe like there's a a box that says enter your repository URL. Yes. Yeah. Then maybe a tick box that says I don't have one. If you yeah. if you don't tick the box and you don't put anything in, these are both grayed out. You write something in the box and then it highlights the one that's appropriate. Um, or you tick the box and it shows them both and you. That's have to cool. Basically I like do. that. Yeah, okay. that takes all the okay. bases. I like that. I'll, I'll I'll have a stab tonight. Cool. Cool. That's yeah, that's neat, um, and that's all front end. But it seems that seems pleasant. I would yeah, get like some UX feedback on it. Um, you know, I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I think we probably do have UX um on this project. I don't, yes. I don't quite know. I'm pretty sure uh, we do. So, uh, what was I going to say? I, I think why did I have a problem? I I couldn't run. I don't think I was able to run the QA, um, QA specs for this, but. Um, that's for another time. Did, did you want to flip around and did you want to talk about one of your top of minds? Yeah, I do have some. Um, <clears throat> I do have some MRs. I was wanting to. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Act. So if we could, if we could pair review on them, that'd be great. Yeah, I'd love to. I've um, recently got back into it a bit because we may have seen that we the the busy indicator doesn't. Um, Basically, uh, doesn't yeah. function. Anymore. Yeah, I, I think that's. I, I think it's a great move to be honest. As so, so. painful as it is, I, I sort of explain this to someone else, saying that um, you know what essentially happens is you get busier periods, and because it's more people are busy, then you get more reviews, and that causes you to mark yourself as busy, so you yep. don't get, and that just makes the problem worse. Yep. So, yeah. Um, what have we got then? What have we got? So I'm just just sent this message to um the MR author that we gotta add some specs. So I'm I'm signing this one off. So cool. thanks for working on this. Uh and getting the uh video working. Uh I think we just need some tests. And we should be good to go. But we'll also need this to be reviewed by a B name. Uh, back to you. Okay. And so then this though, and ah, uh, this MR was um spun out from this MR where uh there was a number of um, classes being used that just didn't seem like they needed to be used. And so I left this comment of like, I don't think we need all the classes that we're using. Oh, yeah. Um, 
And then we weren't sure. And I, I pulled in Mark to see what he thought. And the main thing is that uh, because we're repeating this component a lot, is like, yeah, let's try to reduce our footprint. Mm -hmm. But if we had all of this living in a component, then that's fine. The reason why all these classes were used was um, this component needs to have symmetry with the GitLab UI component. It's reflecting. Okay. And so we just we just have to encapsulate this in a component. But for this immediate case, um, it looks like we went ahead and applied this the changes that I was suggesting. And then on the side, we're creating this component for it. And then it looks like we'll create another MR to replace our usages with rendering the component. But okay. for this step, I'm just looking at it now, saying that um, I kind of want, I think I just want to test this thing out. Um, mm -hmm. I think that'll be all I need to really do. So let me. So we're going to get an insight into your curly, curly yeah. diff. There we go. Curly diff. Love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Curly diff. Uh, did you ever, is the, um, are the Three Stooges, are they uh, internationally known? They are, but I am unfamiliar. I, I, I've i heard of, but yeah. um, I wouldn't have. If you made a reference, it would unfortunately go. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> the Curly Diff. Yep. Um, yeah. So let's just see what this looks like. Uh, let me run um, a bundle of yarn and start. Oh, what's your problem? What is the problem? This is a bad gateway. Sounds like in Engine X isn't starting up. Error. Sending the term signal. Uh oh. Oh, mm -hmm. no. How fast is your internet connection, Paul? Well, we're we're talking. <laughs> um, yeah, it could be a good opportunity for you to try my GDK in a box. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. Oh, yeah, because how it could. Uh, sure. <laughs> um, I'll trying it out. Um, so let me let me let me just add more risk to this by um, uh, running um. reconfigure while um well that's as long if you're oh that's not, oh that wasn't what i meant to send you but it doesn't matter um what did i actually meant to need to send you not that at all no. well you know what i don't realize Go on. Oh man, we don't even have the the like review app thing. Oh, that's really frustrating. Can you manually launch it? Oh man, this looks mad sketch. So I'm interested to it, it, if your internet connection's like I don't know less than a hundred meg or something, then it's probably not worth it. But if if you've got a speedy, whatever, then give it a kick. Let's do it. So you're about a hundred meg. So you just leave that in the background then. Okay. Yeah. Um okay. Well yeah, I was wanting to I was wanting to get this going. Um I'm curious if I have hmm. you think you've got something else running that's yeah, I was wondering if that could have been it, but it doesn't seem like it. Is it right. worth just disabling? In Nginx for five minutes, well, and except I have um, okay, it looks like it's good now. Uh, oh. I think, yeah, um, except that I have HTTPS, so mm. yeah. So, is this a is this a image? 
a darker image? Yeah, so it's it was well, it's, it's a UTM image. So UTM's um like a Mac. It's basically like VirtualBox if you've heard of that. Um, oh, yes, yes, yes. Okay. Runs on Mac Arm, and yeah, you can literally boot it up, and it will be ready to rock. Wow, cool. Okay. And yeah. then when cool. you're having days like this, you know, you just be like, "Well, I'm just going to throw it in the bin and start a new one up," sort of thing. Like, nice. Um, you should um, you should upload it to like a just our general package registry and get like one of the. Yeah, so so we've been sort of trying to figure out how and where and what, you know, been talking about S3 and Cloudflare and GCK and, you know, coming up with different. How would we, how would I, do you, can you think off the top of your head how I would, because you can't manually upload to the registries, can you? And you can. if it's not a Docker, you can, okay. Yeah, you and can. How can you? Can it be an arbitrary sort of, zip file or does it need to be a uh... anything um let me go to the web id um would it need to would i need a pipeline that basically created an artifact that yeah publish and share your packages package workflows um authenticate yeah, you, so you usually use the CI CD to publish to it, but it's pretty straightforward. And like, there's, um, let me just look up what we do here in the GitLab Web ID. Uh, well, you know what? Actually, I think it will be in the VS Code, the our VS Code for it. Mm -hmm. All right. I thought it had to be like either a NuGet package or a Maven. Or like no, a, we have a we have a general know. like package oh. published packages. Okay, yeah, it looks like we have a script here. GL published packages. Um, I gotta show you something. I gotta show you something for this. Yeah, you just curl to the package and you can upload the file. That's that's about it. <laughs> Can you imagine trying to curl upload a file at seven gig? That should be interesting. It might work. I think it'll work. Why would it? Work? It's backed by it's on, using GCP object storage is our uh, as far as you know. I have no idea. That's a good question. <laughs> no, no, uh, that's fine. I mean, okay. yeah, you might, you might. You might get flagged as one of the people that are taking up some room, some storage. But I think I think the it's nice to use the GitLab package registry. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So we can be dog fooding that because. Well, I've also um I've been playing with um component the component catalog and CI components etc a lot recently as well. Which oh yeah, fun. yeah, and um. I, I'm fairly sure this is public, so we might check before we publish this. But um, the the idea, the hope is that we might be able to publish all sorts of stuff into the component. Are we calling it the component catalog or the CI? I can't remember it. We just let's say we're calling it the CI catalog. I think we'd like to publish, and put like Docker images in there, and yeah, you know, Ruby gems and just arbitrary random stuff sort of thing so it's um yeah you know, that's just, cool i can't remember what somebody did they they compared it they, they had a term for it i think there's there's other platforms i don't know if it's called like an engineering platform or, or something you know that are you there is this what um are these the components that um that are being rendered using that call cool, call cool. yeah they seem to be working i realize um i realize i don't have my license anymore um so i'm not i'm missing one of the views uh i need to get my license renewed i need to do that sooner than later i forgot about <laughs> that um but yeah, it's it's these it's these views here. So they seem they seem good. Uh, I think if so I... it's deliberately changed, has it? Because I'm it just has, looking. 
yeah, cool. Because mine has the number swapped around with the the heading, if that makes sense. Yeah. So where it says yeah. projects, mine says the number of projects, and then where yours says the number, mine says projects. Right, right. Let me just I, check. I Go ahead. What were you saying? I presume that was part of like the point of the change, if that makes sense. Yeah, this is from the the UX paper cuts team, and they try to make things consistent across the page. Um, but I'm gonna check dark mode. Make sure those dark those dark numbers are looking right. Yep, they look pretty good. Yeah. All right. Then I'm gonna do once more. I'm, I'm just a little paranoid when we just change views with no tests. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, but it looks pretty straightforward and it's looking good. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think we're pretty good. Yeah, see, these are the things I was seeing earlier, but I removed my, um, I don't have my license anymore, so I, I wasn't able to see them. But I'm going to, that stuff, had. I don't think that stuff really changed. So I think we're good to go. So awesome. It's working on this. Changes look good to me. Proving and starting merge. Entering GIF. I got a wrap up. All right. I um I use uh Ah flops, that's the wrong one. Dang it. This is the wrong MR. <laughs> Sorry for the noise. Ah, that's so frustrating. I mean, ah, yeah. This is the other MR. Someone got too excited. Can I delete all the comments? We're good. All right. Yeah. This is the MR. <laughs> They place the same author, so they like, I don't know. Um, if it was a different author, and I'm just saying, hey, your MR is good, I'm gonna merge it. Wait, never mind. I don't I sometimes need to test like the our uh, GitLab bots working as designed and like come randomly like adding labels and changing descriptions yeah. on issues. And people are like, what? Why why are you yeah? Okay. Cool. Everything is resolved. We are ready to merge. Let me check the. Okay. Cool. Uh, well, I think I probably got to run a pipeline. Yep. We're a couple of days old. Let's go pipeline. Well, that's going. Um, ah, oh, man, I got a lot more MRs uh, <laughs> to review. This one is the one of the other ones that I think was. Oh, this should be a uh, fairly. Yeah, this one's also pretty straightforward. There's some changes we could make, and that I suggested. Our right, pipeline's running great. Now I'm going to set this to auto merge. What check is failing? Oh well, yeah, I I know. That. Uh, awesome. Okay, cool. <clears throat> so those are good to go. Um, this one I had looked at and I left some comments that, um, that, uh, there in some cases we were using S when we did yeah, yeah. space. Um, here. Um, this was this was pre-existing, and so this MR is just changing thing, the links and stuff around. But I real I noticed the URL actually 404s. So I was like, okay, we got to find the right place to put this. Okay. <laughs> and I think um, I found something on our marketing sites, but then I found elsewhere where we kind of have a similar empty state. We're using an actual help page for this. 
So I think that's the one to use. Um, and then yeah, it would worry me a lot if we were hard coding a a URL. Um, yeah. Although I suppose this isn't much different. It's just generating that on the fly, but. Well, I mean, yeah, this is a hard coded in URL, and yeah, it was it was four fouring, so it wasn't not a great <laughs> user experience. Um, okay, but yeah, let's just check out the changes and see where we're at. So I'm gonna oh. reset everything. Uh, Okay. So this is, um, I know that uh, Julia was changing all of the empty states that were previously called geo empty to empty geo mud. And this is changing this to rendering an empty state component. So yeah, that's pretty straightforward. And we have now a title. And actually, instead of doing this link to here, we can just do our have this primary button text and link in the empty state, which looks great with our help page path. And I think everything's looking good. Um, I might not be able to test this out if my license is not allowing it. So let's see. I think this is why I actually removed the license was so that I could test this out. Um, so this should work. You've yep. done this. Awesome. I've got. So it looks. Like, it looks like this is all working as expected. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I, I, I think this MR is good to go. So let's merge this one too. Awesome. Uh, can I show you something funny? Please do. Uh, <clears throat> while I was. While I was um, reviewing this, uh, so we um, we interpolate, hey, your instance is subscribed to this tier. It needs to be this subscription. And we throw in what is the current, you know, license title into there. Um, okay. We had not done the... S thing. <laughs> yeah. So it said I've done that before. Billing plans free tier. Uh but then to my surprise, I was like, oh, we just overlooked that. But to my surprise, we actually had tests for it. Tests that it was billing plans. Specifically free. looking I for know. interest. <laughs> do you know, do you know about the history with like why why we don't have how how's a nice way of phrasing this? Like, <coughs> why we don't have like like could we not use the same method and like either pass it one parameter or two parameters? You know, do you know why we went down the avenue we went down? Um, it's a really good question. I think it's baked into our translation library. And but is the, that something that we built ourselves or and if we did, do you so think if, I, okay, something I, off the shelf? Yeah. Um, and it's because if I could put a, you know, just take a guess. Oh, no, I didn't mean to do. I don't mean an actual. Yeah. Um, it's because the pot file needs these message IDs have to be strings. And the way, like, this is not trying to do anything fancy and just looks for it does a static analysis of the code base looking for method calls that use our translation functions. Yeah, I guess, I guess I'm just sort of saying in my head, I'm like, well, if we just use the underscore method all the time, if we only passed it one string, then that string was an yeah. unnamed yeah. space translation. If we passed it two, then the first one's a namespace and the set or vice yeah, it's, versa. It's definitely not, yeah, it's definitely not a great, I don't know. It has its downsides. Because I've 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 hundred percent done this myself before, <laughs> and um, you know, I was like, oh, hang on. Uh, yeah, that. That's... Yeah. Well, I, I think it's very lentable. Like, I think we could definitely um, 
I think we could. Yeah, definitely... if you had an underscore without the s and you started it with something, and then, and then a you pipe, have a pipe, then like, that's it. Um, we or vice like... versa, if you have an s and you don't have a pipe, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's that's next week's pairing then. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I think I think this is good to go. So let me let me merge this. I think we have all the approvals. Um, yeah, it's got enough approvals. Uh, I didn't even see who approves. It's like, oh yeah, three approvals. That's enough. <laughs> they could all be back in engineers, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for working on this. Approving and starting merge. All right, let's pick a different check. Um. Maybe uh, maybe cyberpunk. Did you ever watch? Did you watch this uh, cyberpunk Edge Runners? No. Uh, it was on Netflix. That was based oh. off of the cyberpunk twenty seventy seven world. Oh yeah. 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 I was uh, sharing the the love for Arcane the other day. That's a good one. I I really want to watch it again. I have it's it. yeah. I wouldn't mind actually. You you probably remember you put me onto it, but it's kind of the only thing that I've watched in its kind of class, if that makes sense. So yeah, I feel like there's there's probably more out there for me to broaden my horizons. Well, I do think like Arcane is you know that's. Is it a gateway sort of? Well, I would say arguably it was was surprise not I guess I guess lots of people didn't have any expectations because it was like this is like a League of Legends thing and like what is this gonna be? But it, it was uh, just so well done. Um, and the studio is not like a really big name studio like. Uh, okay. Um, but yeah, the world of animation is huge. I I, I find myself. I find myself doing watching lots of animations over live action sh stuff. Be interesting to see. Um, I backed a Kickstarter campaign. Um, oh, the nice. guy um, is Olan Rogers. I'd, I'd be amazed if you've heard of him, but he did um, Final Space. Um, that I I thought was was brilliant. But um, he did like a. Like the Kickstarter was all about doing almost, was almost consider it like an open source, not exactly, but he's basically documented the entire journey, including mm. like finding all the people to do the production and, you know, everything oh. down to how he's got the Blu-ray produced and packaged and dispatched. And it's, it's kind of a documentary on on how he's put the whole thing together, if that makes sense. And it the culmination is actually a small production as well. Um, oh, but it's cool. more about the journey than the actual, you know. Wow. Um, yeah, that's cool. Come on. I'll share. Um, I'll share final space though because it was one of my favorite. It just amusing, I guess. Is is all I can. Yeah, yeah. Look it, look it up. Um, if there's a clip on like YouTube or so, just this oh. this guy Gary, like his his kind of like voice and oh, the way wow. people talk to him is just okay. brilliant. Oh, it has, um, wow, it's uh, Fred Armisen. You, um, you know some of the names there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I really enjoyed That's it. I, I, I just, I don't know. Maybe oh, so is it, it, are, they, are they doing more? Are they doing more or are they done with it now? No, unless somehow it's going to get resurrected. But essentially what, what caused Olan Rogers to, to create this um, Kickstarter campaign was he basically did this final space and they canned it. I don't know who it was, HBO or someone. They basically... They 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 pulled it, uh, yeah. and like he was pretty devastated that you know I think it was kind of his baby and he felt yeah. that it wasn't finished and or whatever. So he then spun off and did this kind of like how to get started and um, cool. yeah, yeah. So it's nice when you get a bit of backstory like that. Yeah, that's really neat. We've been um, uh, with the kiddos. Uh, Netflix has every once in a while some like really, really, really chill like animations. So we've been watching these like very chill Japanese stop motion animations. Mm -hmm. uh, there's one called um, 
Melacoma's theme park. Uh, and so I was like, my 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 kiddos are I still have some fairly young ones, and so it's just like so peaceful. Uh, and they're kind of just hanging out in this theme park and little characters, or whatever. But it's also like stop motion, so it's always the okay. neat thing to see. And it's neat to see in the era of I think like Netflix, where I th- I think they're they you see them wanting to put a high level of production, but you see they don't have a whole lot of time or budget to do tighten everything. So you see where what they prioritize and what they animate and what they don't. Like that's the thing I, I was finding really interesting is like you'll see characters in the front animating and then the back is like everyone's just still because it's like we don't have yeah, to yeah, animate yeah, everything yeah. else going on. I, I I got this crazy like picture in my head of like somebody hasn't even bothered to like color in the background. You know? <laughs> yeah. Well and then this is also stop motion, but every once in a while they'll like talk about the past and then that's like done in this like very like like minimal but artistic hand drawn yes. way that symbolizes the past but is also like this helps the animation budget as well <laughs> gotcha. yeah, yeah thought motions is sounds like a sounds really tough but they there's a there's one called uh pokemon concierge that's very very chill and positive kind of this is short four episodes of um but it's also like a stop motion thing super cute they're they're fun with the kiddos nice yeah uh okay all right uh i think i think that i yep i enabled this one to be merging so yeah i'll have to go through my the rest of my backlog later um yeah and i had a number of to do's um but um i gotta get back with these um i gotta get back with these reviews and trying to knock out my own stuff and then then doing some fun stuff on the front end pairing but i'm glad you were able to make it today i know you've been you, yeah. I have been in a couple of weeks no, I, I hope, um, yeah, but I want to try and make more of an effort. I think I've said before, it's, it's slightly tricky. I, I take one of the kids to, to a class that runs from lunch, like 12 till one. Then I, I get to the like into the office about two o'clock-ish. Um, and then this is at three o'clock. So it's, you know, I'm just getting set up and yeah. um, one thing to another. But yeah, fingers crossed. Anyway, have a brilliant weekend and hopefully see you on the flip side. Yeah, I'll see you around. Bye. Catch you later. Bye.